In the previous video, we defined what is type 1 error, um, which has a size of alpha equal to alpha. We defined what is the type 2 error, which we call beta. And we talked about also uh, the 1 minus beta, which is power. And um, we actually set it up so that it looked like this. Uh, reality, where either the null is true or the null is false. One of these two, not both. And then uh, results from your statistical testing. So what does the statistical test yields as a statistical conclusion? So you either fail to reject the null, that's where the p-value is greater than alpha, or you reject the null, and this is where your p-value is less than alpha. And therefore, out of these two possible scenarios and out of these two possible uh, results, you get these four conditions or four possible uh, combinations and that's where either the null is true and you fail to reject it and therefore you've made a correct decision or the null is true and you're rejecting it and therefore you made an error. We call this the type 1 error when this happens alpha percent of the time and we said that this actually resembles the um, false positive scenario. Okay. And uh, the, other, the other thing that can happen is that the null is false, uh, meaning that actually in the population there is a difference between the, the groups uh, that you're comparing, but you're failing to detect it in your sample, okay? And therefore you're declaring that there is no difference and that's the false negative. And we call that, um, this is the type two error and this should happen better percent of the time, and we said it shouldn't exceed the 20%. Whereas if the null hypothesis is false, and you are able to reject it, then we said this is power, and this happens one minus beta percent of the time. This is your true positive results, and here that was the true negative. Okay, and we gave in uh, like definitions of every one of these things. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about the things that impact power, okay? And in reality, it's like um, a triad of three things. So you have power on one hand, you have sample size on one hand, and you have also something called effect size on the other hand. Uh, to be complete, I should also say that there's alpha as well, but I'm not going to address alpha. I'm just going to address these three things. And these three things are actually related. Okay. How are they related? Okay. Now, if you want to increase your power, then, or maybe let me back up for a second. Let me back up and explain uh, what is effect size. So power, we uh, we gave a definition of power. This is the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis that actually is a false null hypothesis. Okay. And sample size, this is just how many individuals you have in your sample. So you already know what that is. So what is effect size? Um, I'm going to give a very simplified definition of what is effect size, just to make it very simple for you. Effect size for us is the difference between the groups. So if you're comparing group one to group two, okay, and let's suppose that uh, you're looking at um, an average and X bar one in group one came out to be, let's say, 120, whereas X bar two in group two was 140. Okay, and let's suppose they have the same standard deviation. Mesela, maybe both have the same standard deviation of 15. Then the effect size in a very simplified way is how much of a difference there is between these two groups. Okay, the further away they are from one another, the large is the size of the effect. And the closest they are to one another, then the smaller is the effect size. Okay, so for example here, Again, a very simplified way, the effect size is 140 minus 120, which is 20. I mean, you have to correct for the standard deviation, but um, let's make it simple. Let's say just that the difference between these two, 140 minus 120, the difference is 20. That would be your effect size. 
Whereas if it turns out that this is not 140, rather it's 160, then now the difference is 40, and therefore the effect size got bigger. Okay? All right, now with this uh, very simplified definition of effect size, let's see what happens, how these three things are related. Okay, now for a certain effect size, if we keep the effect size fixed, okay, if you want to increase power, if you want to have more power, yani you, you want to be able to detect the difference more than 80% of the time, you want to detect the difference 90% of the time, 95% of the time, well, what you need to do is increase your sample size. The more, the larger your sample size is, the more power you have, okay? So that's one way these things are related. So for a fixed effect size, more sample size, more power. Okay, now let's, um, let's say that my, my, um, my sample size is fixed. I cannot change my sample size. However, for some reason, I can change my effect size. So, for instance, I can increase the dose of the treatment to see a larger difference between the two groups. Okay, so, if you want to increase power, where your sample size is fixed, you cannot change it, but you can change your effect size. Increasing the effect size will yield to more power. Okay, so, so far, larger sample size, greater power, larger effect size, greater power. Okay, I mean, if you think about it, the effect size is how different are the groups. The farther away they were from one another, the further away they are from one another, the easier it would be to detect the difference. Okay, so that's effect size. The larger the effect size, the larger power is. All right, the last scenario is what if your power is fixed? Okay, you're not changing power. However, your effect size is changing. Now, Kilmal effect size is larger, you need less people to detect the same power, okay? So, for example, if I have two drugs, one drug reduces the blood pressure by 20, whereas the other drug reduces blood pressure by 40. Now, for, um, for both the drugs, I want a power, also I want to run two studies. And for both the drugs, I need a power of 80% for both of them. Well, since this one has a larger effect size, it will require less people than this one. So maybe here in this study, you will need, I don't know, let's say 50 people. Well, here you might need 110 people or 100 people or 150 people. I don't know, you have to see the formula. But the concept is correct, okay? So let's recap all of this, and again, let's think about how these things are related. Okay, so we talked about three things that are related. Um, power, sample size, and effect size. And I, I did mention previously that alpha is part of, of the relationship, but for now, let's ignore alpha. Let's say alpha is always 5%, so I'm always going to set alpha at 5% right here. I'm not going to change it. Okay, now, first scenario is the effect size is constant. The effect size is not changing, okay? So maybe um, you have one drug and at one dose, and you're comparing the drug to the placebo. The drug has a very specific effect. It doesn't change. So the effect size is constant. If you want a power of 80%, you may need, let's say, uh, 200 individuals per group. Okay. Now, if you decide, no, 80% is too small, I want 90% power. Now, to be able to increase your power, since your effect size is constant, it's not changing, you have to increase N. So maybe your N becomes 500. And then if you say, okay, well, I actually want a 95% power, still your effect size is not changing, maybe here you need 4,000 people, okay? So the more power you need, the, the larger is your sample size, okay? So like um, your sample size is some sort of, uh, of, of uh, a magnifier. The bigger your magnifier, the more power you have to be able to see 
the effect size you're trying to, that you're trying to detect. Okay, so that's scenario number one. All right, let's move to scenario number two. Scenario number two. Again, alpha is not changing. Alpha is staying at five percent. Scenario number two. Um, your 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 uh, your sample size is constant. Okay. So this is constant. This is not changing. So maybe like all in all, the government allows you only only to recruit uh, 500 in your study. And therefore, you cannot recruit more than 500. You're stuck with 500. Okay. So how can you increase your power? And so maybe you need to increase your power from 80% to 90%. Well, if you're able to change the effect size, then you will be able to increase your power. So maybe... Masalan, the effect size was a decrease in blood pressure by 15 units. Well, if you're able to make it mm -hmm. stronger so that you the decrease is Masalan by 25 units, you will have more power. Okay? So for a constant sample size, a larger effect size yields a larger power. So that's scenario number two. Let's see the last scenario. So the last scenario now is when your power is constant. Okay, so your power is constant. Your power is set at 80%. You're not changing the power. But maybe here we're comparing different, different drugs. So I have drug A that compared to placebo, this drug reduces the blood pressure by 20 units. I have drug B. Compared to placebo, this one reduces blood pressure by 30 units. And I have drug C, which is compared to the placebo, it reduces blood pressure by only 10 units. And for every one of these studies, I want 80% power. Then, uh, let's say for drug A, which, uh, which has an effect size of 20, let's say you needed 100 individuals per group. Now, compared to this 100, when you come to drug B, which has a stronger effect size, a bigger, a larger effect size, it should be easier to reach the 80%, and therefore you might only need 60 individuals per group, for example. Whereas for drug C, which has a smaller effect size, so it's harder to reach the 80%, here maybe you will need 300 people to reach the same 80%, okay? And basically, um, this is um, everything you need to know about the relationship. What we will do next is we will uh, go through a testing hypothesis exercise. I'll have an exercise. And uh, after the application of the exercise, we'll start raising questions about uh, the things we covered uh, today, like power and type 1 error and uh, uh, the, the sample size, etc., how these things are impacting the results. All right, thank you.